thank you for thank you for everyone but I guess I'll get started because I have four minutes. Um, when it gets hot outside, I sweat and like a normal person, I will try to react by taking off my jacket, finding shade, and fanning myself. And I do this in effort not to have my heart and my lungs overload. And you would think that buildings should also do the same thing, but it's actually the opposite. Buildings are sealed on the outside so that the central air conditioning and heating have to work very hard. Um, at a time when we're looking for zero energy, or sorry, zero energy answers, um, that we're trying to lower heat gain, we're trying to lower the use of air conditioning, and lower ultimately the use of energy, it just doesn't seem like a smart thing to do in some ways. Uh, but this too um, is not truly a smart answer by wiring up buildings, by putting in a lot of remote controls and sensors, because we're still reliant on that energy. And what we need to do is we need to look for even smarter solutions. So uh, one of the things I work with is a smart material. And in engineering terms, a smart material is defined as something that responds to outdoor um, elements, but <clears throat> excuse me, that um, requires zero energy and also requires no computer controls. And that is the biggest difference, which in some ways is the opposite. So the material I work with is called thermal bimetal. I just walked in with this right here. It's very, very thin metal. And what it is is it's a lamination of two alloys of metal together, and they have different coefficients of expansion. So on one side, um, it expands more than the other when the temperature goes up, and the ultimate action is a curl. So what I do is I use that curling action so that it reacts to the sun itself, and by the geometries we use, we can actually apply it to make shade below at the same time as well as ventilate. So in this project, which I made this very large prototype as a canopy, um, we connected it with a lot of different software tools so that we could maximize in areas that it needed, minimize in others, and do what we call optimization, and make this very, very large sundial where you can see below is very shaded and it's self-supported. Um, in this video, you can see as the sun goes across the surface, it opens up, but, uh, but more so, and this was kind of a surprise to us when we made the video, the shade, when it moves across that surface, it shuts down just as fast. So this can operate on and on and on endlessly. Um, and the application here is in a glass building, for example, where you get a lot of heat gain from the sun, we can cloak it with this type of material and virtually make a shade around it. And again, it goes on and on with the mind of its own and leaves no control. When we apply it between glazing or between glass, we can make these window systems and we can improve the maintenance of it so you don't have to go inside and clean it all the time. In addition, it keeps working forever, and by controlling those geometries, we can um, keep the same amount of view and daylighting, which are really important to human wellness. So here you can see when the sun is um, low during the winter time, the system can allow that heat to come in, and you see on the side the shade is very small. Um, but in the summertime, when the, the sun is very hot, the system will close down and shade behind it. So here's a very quick video of the, the pieces up close. You can see in the system, you can get visibility through it this, the entire time before and after as it moves. And what I'm going to do really quickly is demonstrate it on this window. See, I'm using a heat gun um, to simulate the sun itself. <laughs> um, and basically what it means in the end is that we have to start looking at facades very, very differently. That is actually a very responsive, a very dynamic surface and change the way we look at things. And ultimately, my belief is that we don't need more materials. What we need is actually smarter ones. I'll start. I have a question um, about the, this level of scale of the prototype. Um, as you've gone up and started looking at it in the lamination um, within the window system itself, how has um, your next steps, what are they starting to look like? So how are you scaling? What is, the, what is the price point that you're starting to see? How are you, what are you doing to move forward to bring this in as, as a new material that we can use within architectural design? Um, we have actually um, new and uh, different prototypes that we're working with. We scaled up. We have windows that are about three by three, three feet by three feet right now. Um, and we're prototyping them with different, what we call the network system. So the hanging system that is hung on 
is we're trying to improve the manufacturing of that so it's a very easy manufacturing process by using what we're calling an expanded metal system. So it's something that you just expand instantly, attach to the frame, or in window terms, they're calling spacers. Um, so that's very easy manufacturing. I don't know, um, we're in the process right now of trying to um, figure out how much the cost of manufacturing is itself. Um, it's an area that we're not super familiar with, so it's, 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 it's new territory. Um, but the cost of the material itself is actually very, very inexpensive. Um, at this stage, I think we're, we're working with something that probably costs even pennies um, per, oh, sorry, it's probably about, yeah, it's about a dollar maybe per square foot. So, first off, I'll be great presentation and so interactive. So, bonus points for all that. So, I need to, like, I'm the, you know, former going on architecture design school student in the yes. loves it. And the, like, putting, like, a real estate developer hat on and legal developer hat on. Um, maintenance, like, it, it seems like the cleaning stuff or some of this stuff could, you know, you go to buildings all the time that have these skins and, like, they just aren't easy to clean and they go super dirty. What, what are your thoughts on that? Well, the window system needs no maintenance because it actually is sealed. And the, the I, I mean, I, I don't want to go too deep terminology. I don't know if everyone will understand this, but we're putting in what's called the triple glaze system. So basically what it is, is it has two cavities. And one of the cavities is actually sealed um, ITU unit. <laughs> it's actually highly insulating right? um, glass unit, right? And on the adjacent to it, on the outside, is where we put the system so that um, it actually is closer to the sunny side of the surface. Um, and from there, you would actually never have to maintain it at all. Because it's in, it also is in a sealed environment. There's no um, dust or anything that would get in there. And it virtually will work for probably 40 plus years. No, interior, interior. Oh, I love it. <laughs> I, I love the idea. I can't wait to see it on a building. I think it'll be amazing. Um, my question would be if it's sort of a similar question. If you know, a lot of times the interest of the user conflicts with the interest of the performance of the system. So I wonder if you've looked at ways in which you could um, a user, an individual, could adjust the system against the performance of the, of the sun. Um, so that, that is something that has come up, and it's really funny because I mean, half the people I meet think that that's a problem. The other half say, forget the user, we need you know, energy savings that we don't need. The second you get users involved again and control is the moment the energy you know, goes down. But um, what we've um, worked with, um, we talked to some engineers, is there's a way to actually um, open the cavity itself of that window and allow that space to ventilate so it will go back down to a closed position. So, so by making a really neat a, a little lever, you can get some um, um, vertical um, step, heat step. release. Based on your initial findings, your initial projects, what are the metrics around the amount of energy that's saved in, in the building itself? And we're going to have to. Okay, sorry. Um, it's probably um, right now. Uh, we just got a report back. We're we're using a um, consultant getting those numbers. They're saying it's somewhere between thirty-five and forty percent savings. So thank you. Thank you.